Evening, ladies and gentlemen. We seem overcrowded, so I'll start. Um, thank you all the members of the public, councillors and officers who are joining us for today or tonight's meeting. Please be aware that the council is live streaming this meeting direct to our YouTube channel. While physical ven venue of the meeting is difficult, we are endeavouring to keep the usual meeting format as best as possible. There are, however, some key changes that I ought to highlight. Councillors looking to speak will be invited to do so by the chair in front of manner, in the usual manner, and will need to come up to the nearest microphone in front to speak, unless you have a microphone on your table. Please do not touch the microphone wherever possible. For councillors who have table microphones, the sound technician will be unmuting your microphone when you are invited to speak. If councillors have any concerns about hearing or seeing others in the meeting, please let the chair or the council officer know straight away. If anybody using hearing aids, please make sure to connect to the hearing loop for the best audio quality. I must also run through a few health and safety points for those physically in the meeting room. Face masks must be worn at all times, except when you are speaking at a, at a microphone or have a medical exemption. The fire exits, fire exits are the main, via the main entrance that you enter through the venue through or the disabled access point. The assembly point is out on West Down Road to the east of the building, and if you're able to, up towards the unmade section of Wilmington Road. In the venue, please limit your touching of shared services as best as possible. Although I can confirm that the tables and chairs and other services and facilities have been cleaned ahead of the meeting. Please remain seated unless you are invited to speak or need to take a comfort break. The toilet facilities are by the main entrance door. When moving around the room, please maintain your distance from others. I would ask the participants to leave the, the meeting to wait until the end of the agenda item to limit distractions for other participants. Voting will be done by a show of hands. Please be sure to make sure your hand is clearly lifted and keep it up until the chair has called the vote. If the meeting goes into confidential session, a short two minute break will be held to allow members of the public to leave and stop the live stream feed. Um, as far as we have no uh, members of public, so there's no need for me to read the rest of it. Uh, I'll go down to the bottom. To all present, please remember to show respect for others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. If any councillor feels concerned about any aspect of the meeting or discussion, please clearly state point of order. The chair will then gesture for you to elaborate. If any, anyone present felt, felt to be behaving unacceptably, they can be ejected from the meeting by resolution. Thank you for listening. On behalf of the council, I wish to like to thank everybody for attending this town council meeting. Right, now let's start on the proper stuff. Agenda, item one, apologies for absence. Yes, Chair, we have apologies from Alan Miller and Eddie Martin from Seaford Head Golf Club. Thank you. Right. Item two, declosure of interest. To do with any declosure by members of any disposable, declosable pecuniary interest and interest other than pecuniary interest as defined under the Seaford Town Council Code of Conduct and Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Um, as there's no public um, uh, participation, I shall um, turn over and head for item four, which is the head greenkeepers updates report. Which is uh, Simon Lambert. Good evening, everyone. Um, Simon, you can take your mask off while you're talking. Okay. Good luck. Um, 
I think my report has pretty covered everything on this. I'll just highlight a few things. Um, we've been a very busy on the golf course since it's been open. I think most golfers have enjoyed it. Um, we've worked hard to keep the course nice. Uh, Wildflower wise this year has been a pretty spectacular display across the course. The bluebells have done well and all the other um, areas of the natural and perennial wildflowers have all done great. Uh, we're going to talk about the 17th green, I believe, a bit later on on the full report. Um, and that's about it. So, welcome any questions with anything else you might want to know. The Mayor, Rodney. Thank you, Chair. This is a, a comment rather than a question. After the uh, beach clean on Sunday, I was approached by a member of the public who wanted to compliment you and your team for the way the work that's been done on the golf course during the recent few months. And what he was saying was that the, the sustainability that is being wor worked for, uh, the environmental good practice, uh, all of that needs to be promoted more strongly on the basis that what we've got in Seaford now is an example of good practice for municipal golf courses or golf courses across the country in terms of the commitments already been made and the best practice is already there. So I just want to feed into this meeting what I was told on Sunday by somebody who came up to find me to make a point of telling me that. So they're clearly impressed. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, golf professionals update. That's Fraser, Fraser Morley, please. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, again, as soon as Simon, most of the report is in there. I've got a slight update with the memberships, which is some good news. We're now uh, plus 14 in regards to numbers on last year's members, uh, which now takes us over our budgeted figure for the year, uh, which is a good start. Um, um, as I say, I'll take, happy to take any questions on the rest of the report while we're here. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much, sir. now to item six, uh, general manager Craig Nicol. Evening everyone, uh, just again the report is there, just wanted to update you on the Shall I do that after he's at his yeah. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. Uh, again, the report is there. I just wanted to update you on the chef situation. Um, from Friday, we won't have any chefs, except for the sous chef, who's only been with us for three weeks. And our agencies that we normally use as backup cannot find any chefs for us. So from next week, I'll be going in the kitchen with the sous chef and with the support from some of our students that are coming to help. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we will be having to reduce the menus um, and, and operate accordingly with no chefs at all, with one chef in the kitchen. It's going to be very, very tough, which is a shame because business has bounced back superbly well uh, and we're at the business levels that we were at before, you know, like for like, without functions before the close down. So that's the situation with the kitchen and uh, assistant manager starts on Thursday. So that position is filled. 
So, uh, any questions, please, on the report? Mm. I've got um, here uh, recommendations to note the contents of the report, to agree to purchase a 10-inch PSI touch system and approve up to £834 towards the cost of this system. Uh, to note that in future years, the Town Council will budget for the cost of the annual hardware support service, currently £282, including VAT, and will speak with Seaford Head Golf Club about whether it will be willing to make an annual contribution towards this cost. That, that is for the golf professional. Yeah, That's yeah. The golf. Um, so what, we're going to put it to the vote. Yeah, so, so sorry, Greg, so we're just going to start here. So that's Craig's report under item 6, and there weren't any questions for that report. But we just want to jump back quickly to item 5, because there, there are three motions we have to pass there. So you'll have seen from the papers, as the Chair said, to note the contents report, to agree to purchase 10 HP HRI trust system with the cost shown, and then the future year financial commitment for such a system, but talking to Seaford Head Golf Club about sharing some of those costs. Would anyone like to propose those three items together as a motion. Councillor Brown, thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Reid seconding. Okay, and see all those in favour, please. Okay, that's, all, that's passed unanimously, thank you. All good, Fraser. Um, and then, Chair, maybe we could just note the contents of, item, of, of the reports for item four and item six so that they'll be formally passed into the, into the records as well. Oh, okay, um, item four, which I forgot to do, I apologise. Um, the, the Golf and the View Committee is recommended to note the contents of this report, which um, has been given at, uh, by Simon Lambert. Okay, someone like to propose that, please? Councillor Edson, thank you. Second, um, Councillor Cash. The same, same on um, item five from Fraser Morley, the, 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 uh, oh, we've uh, already done that one. Yeah. We just, we just, sorry, Chair, we just take a vote on item four, just check everyone's happy to yeah, make the report. Item four, yeah. Thank you, that's unanimous, thank you, councillors. And then we just heard from Craig about the view, including the work he's having to do because of the staffing challenges faced by much of the hospitality sector at the moment, it has to be said. Yes. Um, so again, would someone like to propose we note this report, please? Thank you, Councillor Edson. Second, Councillor Cash. And all those in favour of noting the view report, please. Thank you, that's unanimous again. Thank you, Councillors. That's great. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, I think we can move on to item seven. Yeah. I'll pass back to you twice for item seven. Item seven, yes. So uh, I'm going to cover this report. Um, because Karen has sent her apologies for this meeting. Um, so I think that it's, it's, I have to praise my RFO in her absence for a very clear and comprehensive summary of the financial position for golf and the view for the year that we've just finished. And I think Karen articulates really clearly the challenges that were faced and the work that was done to meet them. And I think all the officers here are to be congratulated for the, for the job they did in those trying circumstances and for the financial performance to end where it did, which as many councillors will know, um, is a lot more successful than may have been forecast at the beginning of the pandemic. So, in, but Karen sets out the details within the report in terms of the overall income and expenditure against original budget and the reasons for the variance. And then she also breaks that down for the golf course and for the view, the two sections effectively making up golf and the view within the accounts. Um, and then she also talks about the savings that were made during the year and also the grants that were claimed from government. And it was really those savings and that, those grants from government that made such a difference financially during the last financial year. While also noting, finally, the important decision that was taken to, to maintain the Greenkeepers team so the golf course could be maintained in such an immaculate state for when it returned to operation at the end of March. I'm happy to take any questions councillors have about this report. Thank you. Councillor Brown.
Thank you, Chair. I understand that we've had a grant of £18,000 towards the cost of the view. Yes, that's correct. Um, the latest, that's the latest iteration of potential government support for businesses impacted. Um, and we were eligible to apply for that and the application was successful. Thank you. Yes, I think that the, um, the staff have worked very hard to try and mitigate the, the loss of income and I know that they're working even harder to try and rectify that. So thank you all. Thank you, Councillor Moody. Any other questions on the report? So, the uh, Golf and Abugal Committee are recommended to note the cont contents of this report. Proposed by Councillor Cash, seconded by Councillor Brown. And is the, and, uh, all, those, all those in favour? Hands in favour. Thank you. That's unanimous, Chair. Thank you. Right. Uh, move on to item eight. Uh, seventh, 17th Green Replacement, uh, initial report from Simon Lambert. Hello again. Um, not my favourite place to be, but I'll do my best. Um, yeah, the report was pretty extensive. We um, have come to the point where we need to really plan for the future of the golf course and maintaining 18 holes. And that means that the 17th green that is currently 20 metres away from the cliff edge and about a metre away from the Vanguard's way footpath needs to be um, redesigned as a whole to move the green to a safer place. Um, so as detailed in the report, we've made some steps in looking into areas that possibly could be used. Um, we've identified who that we will need to consult and who we will need to negotiate with as to where we can move it to and where we can put it. Um, we've met with, or Fraser's spoke to the club and we got some representation from them to involve in the process along with other officers, Tony from the council. Um, so that's where we're at really. Um, we just wanted to report that we are taking action to progress to be able to put forward a plan to do that. And we've just, at the initial stages now, I'm finding out what we need to do and who we need to speak to. So um, that's where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Rodney, Councillor Reid. Yes, thank you. Well, the way the cliff edge is advancing, it clearly is the work that needs to be done. Can you give us an idea on the time frame for this? How long will it, if you like, the feasibility take and when might this need to be done? Um, I can't give you any time frame at all. We could go back tomorrow and the cliff, the green could be gone or the green could still be there in 10 years. So it's something that has been looked at and discussed for many years. And with the recent sort of two or three years, previous falls we've had, I think now's the time to act and get that into, into start progressing it. Um, in terms of the build, if when we were successful in deciding an option that is suitable for all the parties involved, we probably need a year to build and grow in the green to a position where it's playable. Um, but I don't know what the time scale would be in terms of getting to that point. Uh, we need to come up with some designs, but to do that, we need to know what we're allowed and what we're not allowed to do. I think the biggest issue in terms of constructing a green, we've got the expertise to design exactly what we want, but it's on the triple SI site. It's inside the Sax. Uh, I've been correct. It's not a Saxon, it's an Iron Age hill fort. Um, and uh, English heritage and English nature and then also on Southlands National Park so there's going to be a lot of bodies that are going to want to have some input into what we're doing I believe so the it will probably take longer to get to a point where we can get a digger in the ground then it will take the digger to do the work Okay, thank you, Chair. This seems to be something that's increasingly important to do and incredibly difficult to achieve but uh, necessary so um, thank you No, sorry. We have no. Um, it's very hard to put a cost on it. It would depend on the do design. If we were to have a flat piece of ground and we levelled it, set, built up 
the soil layers, you could probably spend 15 to 20,000. I suspect we will have to spend more than that. Um, we're currently looking into, or I'm currently looking with a team, we've got areas of land on the golf course that we can use all the materials from. So we won't have to import anything from outside. Um, so that will A, will help in costs and B, should help to keep relevant people happy in manoeuvring machinery about and materials about. So hopefully that will help in the budgeting process. Yeah, clearly we'll be talking to the RFO and the Finance and General Purpose Committee before we set the budget for next year. Um, as Simon said, I, mean, I think it's really helpful to have such an early stage report so councillors can see what's going on. And I think we could all see from the picture, from the pictures which are fantastic, just how close that green is to the edge of the cliff now. So clearly the time has come to take the sensible steps. But as, as Simon's very carefully explained, um, over the summer, really, we need to start to consult with some of the relevant stakeholders. Um, and then hopefully, depending on how long that takes, later in the calendar year, begin to scope out the work. Uh, so we probably want to set some funds aside in next year's budget. Yes. You said it would take a year to do. Would the golf course still be open during that year or do we need to budget for it to be closed? Um, no, we don't need to budget for it to be closed. There's a number of options. So, depending on the design, we may be able to use the original green still while the new green is being grown in. Um, it also depends on cost. I'm very conscious that we want to keep it natural to the rest of the course, which might, in my experience, it might mean we need to use the turf from the existing green on the new green just to keep it consistent with the rest of the course but if that was the case we um, can create a temporary green so we can still offer 18 holes um, albeit not exactly how it is now and not exactly how it will be when it's finished but we can there's there's plenty we can do to ensure we keep a 18 hole facility open so that's great thank you no, important question definitely good to clarify that Thank you Thank very you. much. Sir. Thank you, sir. The Golf and Review Committee is recommended to note the contents of this report. Proposed by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Edson. Everyone showing for that? That's unanimous for the minutes. Item, agenda item number nine. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, again, as as has been discussed at previous committees some months ago. Um, as the report says, really, everyone is very clear that the arrangements with the golf professional need to be brought up to date and reviewed and brought up to date because for, two, for, for the reasons it says in the report, um, the current arrangement dates back to 2010, uh, which is now 11 years old, obviously 11 years old. The golf professional themselves wants matters to be clarified uh, things, and potentially, you know, sensible changes to be agreed. Um, and also thirdly, as an employer, uh, in terms of our relationship with people like NHF, in their revenue and people like that, making sure there's absolute clarity around the status of the gold professional in terms of their employment. So these are the drivers to the process. And so how we approach this is to break it down into those two stages. First of all, determine the status, and secondly, then move on to the actual review itself. I'm pleased to report to councillors that the first stage of the review is complete. I'm grateful to our executive support officer who has the necessary professional expertise to undertake this review and is carried out using the materials available from HM, HM Revenue and Customs, who are the, obviously the arbiters of these things, so it's good if, we, if we're determining it through their criteria. Um, and that came up with a very clear result in terms of status as contractor, so we know how and what form to draw up the necessary agreements going forward with the goal professional as the review goes forward. And then secondly, in terms of implementation, I think we've been looking to see if we could find, I think the, well, put it way, I think the person we're looking for probably has a particular set of skills and experiences really, and they're quite 
there aren't that many people with them, I would say, if that makes sense, in terms of the necessary golfing expertise, I think, but also, you know, necessary ex suitable external professional skills and, and expertise as well. But, and so that's why we're delighted that we're being able to link to the PGA themselves and the head of membership support who does, you know, hold the necessary expertise to undertake such a review. Um, so, so and, and they've indicated their willingness to help us and therefore the next step is for us to begin to that process and so they will be coming to visit in July and, and we're going to make sure that all the key stakeholders, obviously the golf professional themselves, the Greenkeepers team, members of this committee, representatives from the golf club, as well as our own executive support officer for HR reasons, will all be included in people who the um, and also the view as well. So make sure we cover all, all necessary stakeholders in terms of undertaking this review. Um, and it may be we have to do some additional Zoom meetings as well as the physical visit because of the number of people this person needs to meet. Um, and then by the time of the next committee, we hope that the review would have made significant progress. Um, the, the, we're able to, we, because of the arrangements between the Gold Professional and the PGA, these services are offered at zero cost. There's no financial implications to these, to these actions. I hope that gives everyone the update. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. No questions? Okay. The Golf and Review Committee are recommended to note the contents of this report. Proposed by Councillor Reid, seconded by Councillor Edson. And all, everyone, who wants, and those in favour, and everyone has, that's unanimous for the minutes. Thank you. That brings uh, this meeting to a close. Thank you very much what, for attending. What, what, to what time is it, Chef? What's, what time is At, it? At uh, 7.32. 7.32. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.